And this is uh, my student card from university. Oh, okay. And my, my ID. Right. Okay. Do you mind if I just take a photocopy of this? Of this? Yeah. 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 It's all right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, actually the certification was completely fake. I didn't write to my teacher, either contact to university about this. But I did it because it was the only way to find the interview with Valerie Sandy. And no one from hers didn't let me to interview her. The guy you hear I'm talking with is her lawyer and supervisor of her activities. And at first, they didn't want me to film this. Well, I guess we should start since the beginning of this story. Australia, officially the Commonwealth of Australia, is a country the southern hemisphere comprising the mainland of the Australian continent as well as the island of Tasmania and numerous smaller islands in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. It is the world's sixth largest country by total area. Neighboring countries include Indonesia, East Timor and Papua New Guinea to the north, the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and New Caledonia to the northeast and New Zealand to the southeast. For at least 40,000 years before European settlement in the late 18th century, Australia was inhabited by indigenous Australians who belonged to one or more of roughly 250 language groups. After discovered by Dutch explorers in 1606, Australia's eastern half was claimed by Great Britain in 1770. A highly developed country, Australia is the world's 13th largest economy and has the world's 5th highest per capita income. With the second highest human development index globally, Australia ranks highly in many international comparisons of national performance. This is Australia too. And this is Pilbara. Pilbara is a large, dry, thinly populated region in the north of Western Australia known for its Aboriginal peoples, its stunning landscapes, the red earth, and its mineral deposits, in particular iron ore, which contributes significantly to Western Australia's economy. The major settlements of the regions are Port Hedland, Newman, and Caratha. And this is Caratha, which was developed from the 1960s to accommodate the processing and exploitation workforce of the Hounsley Iron Mining Company and afterwards petroleum and liquefied natural gas operations. Carasa has the largest shopping center in the Pilbara, Central Carasa, which has major food and grocery retailers and department stores chains. It was opened in 1986 as Carasa City and expanded in 2005. The center also serves the neighboring towns of Dampier, Wickham and Roburn. And finally, this is Roburn, a small town located 40 kilometers north of Caratha. This town was established in 1886 as a center for the pastoral industry because the nearby Perlin town of Kazakh lacked fresh water. Initially, Roburn's population was made up of white settlers, station owners, and local Aboriginal people. Older Aboriginal people came to live and work in this town as they were moved off their land. This day, Robert's population is made up of indigenous and non-indigenous people, as there are approximately 946 people, most of them from the Injibanji indigenous group. Last year, Inji Banji people was pushed to sign a contract with Australia's richest man Andrew Forrest and his company FMG, Fortescue Metal Group. 
which have leases to mine it as the five billion Solomon project that represents most of the Injibanji lands. The FNG offered to the Injibanji people is a fixed payment of just all 57% of the income from Solomon. Due to personal interest, the Injibanji people has been split in two groups. The first one, represented by Michael Woodley, who leads the Injibanji Aboriginal Corporation, and the second group, the Breakaways, which is the Wilmamaru Aboriginal Corporation with Alary Sandy, as the boss who is working with FNG and receiving their benefits. So, Jillawalu is about um, the Injibanji people, who we are, families, connection, culture, religion, um, and our core business is culture. So, for instance, at the moment, um, we've got Injibanji people doing law, um, which is still carried on in this area, and that, that involves families, Injibanji people, and all other language groups from this area getting together, and they travel through the Pilbara, and they go through their ceremonies, which are mainly focused around the boys, you know, becoming men. But that's really only just one focus of, of the um, ceremonies because it's a whole gathering of, of all the people and basically reliving and, and discussing you know, what's going on in the communities and then catching up with the family ties and um, basically being in country as well, which is a big factor of, of, of culture, is knowing your country, knowing your language, um, knowing your identity. And here in Australia, it's, it's really difficult for Aboriginal groups to do that because there's a lot of pressure from non-Indigenous communities, obviously Australians. It's very difficult for small minority groups to maintain their history and culture because they really do it, you feel like you're in a bit of a vacuum in many ways and you don't get a lot of support. And so there's, um, there's a real uh, resistance um, and you have to be so strong if you're an Injibani person in our case to carry that tradition and carry that knowledge and language on. I mean, bearing in mind that native title now has been in Australia since 1993, so it's you know nearly a nearly two decades. You know? And um, and it was a big shock when it first happened because I don't know if you've heard about the Mabo decision, but this was Eddie Mabo, the Torres Strait Islander, who put in a land claim over the islands, you know, and won. And at that time, the High Court said, well. Native title may also exist in Australia on the mainland, right, where the indigenous groups have kept their culture, kept their connection to the country, and so on. Right? Um, and native, the whole concept of native title, uh, I mean, native title really is a process, it's a white fella process, which gives legal recognition to rights and interests in land and country um, that exist under Aboriginal law. Right? So, so, like uh, a foreign law, it's a process of recognition of foreign law, right? And the idea was that because we had a, a Racial Discrimination Act, which came in in 1975, um, and what the High Court had said, well, before 1975, the Crown, the state, um, could dispossess Aboriginal people of their land um, at will for no compensation, just take it. But after 1975, when the Racial Discrimination Act came into being, um, they had to treat blackfellas the same way as they treated whitefellas. And if you're going to take land away from them, then you have to pay compensation. So that if the government wants to grant interest in the land in the future, Aboriginal people will have this right to negotiate. Now, of course, the mining companies in the past have said, oh, hang on, what does that mean for us? Um, you know, we don't want to be held for ransom. Um, you know, we, want, we don't want to be told that we have to have an agreement, and if we don't have an agreement, we're going to lose out. We've got to get on with business, you know? So what they did was they made this right to negotiate a six-month period. Um, and if Aboriginal people don't agree in six months, then basically they lose. Um, the mining company or pastoralists or whoever it is seeking an interest in land, they go to the tribunal and the tribunal uh, makes a determination which allows the interest to be granted. And then afterwards, if people are able to prove they've got native title, um, then they claim compensation.
Which way is it to the cage? This way is it? What has happened with the FMG situation? Um, it's put a lot of strain on the organisation and on the people working in the organisation because as you can see we're not we're not hugely resourced hmm. you know we you know we run with very little money a lot of passion and people are very committed to what they're doing but how long can you keep putting in that commitment without feeling exhausted and tired because when I went to the Solomon Hub country that is in question at the moment um, I went there in May and filmed a lot of the countryside and one of the ladies, one of the elders that I went with said, this has got to be documented. I was just looking at the footage actually yesterday, last night, and she said, this has got to be documented. The plants, the animals, the country, even the hills have names and uh, you know, we have songs and this has to be documented because it's all going to be destroyed. And going back last week to that country, months after, it's been destroyed. Not all of it, but it's going to be all destroyed. And it's sad. So I'm glad that I filmed. I'm glad it was documented. Because that's the only record we have of that country. Because now, officially, a lot of those people, those elders, those Injibani people, can't get back to that country. They're not allowed in. Because it's being blown up at the moment. And the fight at the moment is to preserve what is left because there's an, an injustice being done here. But you know, more than that, it's important that those people remember as part of their culture what those songs, stories, and what that country is. <laughs> Is their connection to country, which is tied up with their religion. And those things are equally important to them. And I think we tend to forget that. A lot of people have forgotten that. The situation has split the community and the situation is woven through every level of this community, one way or the other. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is it's a small community. Here now, we're trying to, you know, <clears throat> the company's coming here offering us employment, up training in, uh, opportunities in employment, training, but you don't, you don't look at the, what we have here that's already in the community, you know, the, the problems we have with our uh, children, the lack of education, lack of 
you know, especially education, you know, you, you don't have any kids, you know, not going to school. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's the other group they was pushing, yeah, <coughs> mm. yeah, making, causing trouble for the injury. One claim that they split, split up with us, and the other injury people went to um, what do you call them there? Ulomaragu. Uh, what we try to do is, uh, we're trying to tell the uh, company, here's the thing, this is what we want. It's not, not what you want, what the people, what our people want. You deal with this, deal with us the right way so we can take care of the things that in the community, like creating jobs for our own people, taking care of our children and educating them, giving them a good education. You know, if there's the cities out there in Perth, you know, we want to send kids out there to get a really good education where they qualify to take on. Um, you know, if they, if they want to work for a company, then they can, but if they want to come back and help our people, then they could work for us doing our book works and, you know, even helping out in doing our own history and thing, you know, recording, things like that. I hope so, that, that we will, the other anybody, breaker group will come as one, you know? Hmm. Like, like one of the elders said in the TV, but it's been passed on. We as the anybody, anybody group as one, we should be as one. Do you, you have tried or, or have they tried to, to, to have this conversation, to have this, uh, to try to, to... That is our next step, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, I think it takes time to come together. How do we get together and have a meeting without being abusive to each other? And, you know, we just want to take the talk back from our people. Everybody wants to be, uh, you know. Uh, the person you know, leading the leading the charge, thinking that they know, knowing what they, you know, what's best for the people in the community, in the country. 
um, and, and, and what what is what has basically happened is that you know they've been led down the garden path. You know they 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 totally been you know used and manipulated as well, conned and corrupt. Native title is, is about protecting your country and your native title rights and interests to, to, to the land. It's not about giving it away. It's about preserving it. And this is why the documentation of history is so important. So when we go to uh, 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 try and manage or, or, or try and explain the native title rights and this of anybody, we can say, well, here's the information that we've done over 10 or 12 years, recording old people. And they say that this area is significant because of these reasons. Well, the, whole, the whole area where they, what they call the, the Solomon Hub, is basically at risk of, of, of destroying all our, all our sites. Does FMG let you know prior to these excavations? No, they're not. That's, see, that's one of the other, 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 you know, disturbing part of this story. They're using the breakaway people to be their, you know, authorization group to say, well, this is, you know, you have our blessing, the Egyptian people, uh, to to destroy this country or take this or do this or, or whatever. You don't, you know, what they're doing now is ignoring the Egyptian Aboriginal Corporation, which has been set up by law under the federal court in terms of our native title determination. We're the one who are legally authorized to discuss any of this native title, you know, discussion with, with, with companies. Well, look, anything's possible, and I sincerely hope so. But I, 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 I reckon this will be a generational thing. It'll go on for a long time, sadly. Hmm. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, like I said, it's, it's started off as a strong, united, you know, community. Of people who, who who respect each other and respect the land. Uh, now to this, you know, to totally, you know, you know, fractured and you know, in a fragmented, uh, you know, organization, or oh, not organization, but you know, a group that, you know, don't know where we stand, you know, as a as a as a people. Um, and it's sad, it's sad for the community, it's sad for our country, it's sad for our culture, and it's sad for our, you know, it's sad for our next generation. You, you have, uh, from the relative from the, from the work, workaways, no? On my blood. Hmm. My own family. 